You know, this really does handle nicely. Does it feel good? It really does. In fact, I think if you took somebody who was not a car person, put them in this, and didn't tell them it was electric, I don't think they would know. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car we're featuring today, the Mustang Mach-E GT Performance Edition. This is the one uh, the enthusiasts have been waiting for, and we're going to find out more about that from the man who is director of Future Electric Vehicles, Dave Persek. Dave, come on in. Hey, Jay. Now, I remember Dave when he was uh, director of Future Wins at Le Mans. <laughs> And that was fun. That's right. And you did the Le Mans winning car, which I can't imagine the pressure from bosses. Are you, you going to win this year or not? Are, are you, I, I mean, that, that's literally what it was, isn't it? It you, literally is what it was. Yeah, yes. you, you had to, if you didn't win, well, now you're, it's, it's like being heavyweight champ. You're one punch away from being just a, a guy on, on the street or the heavyweight champ. If we world. didn't win, I might not be standing here talking about the Mustang e Mach-E. Exactly, exactly. Well, let's talk about this, because I remember, and it kind of made me laugh when it first came out, they're doing electric Mustang. Ah, dah, dah, people just furious at the Mustang. And it's not electric. <laughs> but I think if you had called it the Electra something or, you know, with some sort of electricity sounding name, it would have been just an electric car. But being a Mustang, it, it, people sense maybe it had something more. Is that the idea? Absolutely. We are leaning into all of our iconic vehicles. We're electrifying the F-150, the Transit, the right. Mustang, all the things that we're known for and that we're good at, we're bringing it even further now with electrification. So we wanted to lean heavily into the Mustang. Yes, I agree with you. I think it was really important that we, we leaned into Mustang. It's a, one of the best known brands around the world. Right. Yeah, there were some people at, at first were a little uneasy about what was happening. But I'll tell you, now that it's been out on the road and now that you know we've sold so many of them, it's just people are in love with this. Well, thing. it's actually outselling the gas version. Isn't it? Yeah, currently it is. Currently it is. I mean, um, that, that's pretty. I didn't think anybody expected that this quickly out of the gate. Yeah. You know, there used to be a thing in the old days. Oh, you don't buy the first year of anything because it's nothing but problems. Because in, in the old days, you, the consumer, did the R and D. Now it's true. You you can't do that. You know, it's like it's like the restaurant business. If anything less than an A in the window, people won't eat there. <laughs> right. Who goes in a restaurant with a C minus in it? You don't. You don't. You know. And to me, you're not going to buy a vehicle if there's even the slightest hint of any sort of problem because with the internet, like wildfire, it spreads. So you've got to have it perfect right out of the box. Absolutely. You get a daily report card with the internet now. So right. <laughs> right. Um, no, absolutely. And, that, and when we decided we were going to do a Mustang, Jay, we always knew we were going to have to do a high-performance GT version of it. Right. And that's what we're here today to talk about. I mean, it's just amping everything up even further. Well, even the horse on the front is different. I could see. It's illuminated. Yeah, and he's got lightning bolts for the main. <laughs> I, I, I assume those are It is. It's, it's, been, it's been slightly tweaked. So keeping the same horse but making it a bit more modern. Right. You know, leaning into that electrification. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's interesting that you notice that. And on the GT version, that horse is illuminated. Just another signal that this is an electric vehicle. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a dual motor, not dual engine because it's electric, so you call it motor now. Right. I, I, I always get, you know, I'll say, what's the engine? It's not an engine. Okay, it's a motor. Okay. <laughs> it's a dual motor, obviously front and back. Okay. Yeah, and what we did with the GT version, Jay, is we basically took the rear motor, mm -hmm. which was the bigger motor in the base version of the vehicle, and we actually pulled it and put another one of those up front. Oh, so I now see. you got two bigger motors now. Okay. Right? Same motor that you had in the rear of the base one is now sitting in the front of this one. And what's our horsepower? 480? 480 horsepower 480 combined. 480 yeah. horsepower. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. We're in an era now where horsepower, uh, yeah, I always use this as, 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 I've said this a million times, but you know, when I bought my Viper way back in the, oh, you'll never see 400 horsepower. Remember the salesman thought, you'll never see 400 horsepower in the production <laughs> again, the way things are going, you know, blah, blah. And of course now that, that's like the base model for exactly. a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. And the torque, you know, as, What's as you What's your torque know. on this? So the GT Performance Edition is 634 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, I mean, that's insane. And it's instantaneous, as you know. It's now. Right. right. And it's like they say, horsepower sells cars, torque wins races. That's right. And then that's, that's, really, yep. that's really what it is. Because torque is the, sort of that driving force that allows the car to literally dig in. And of course, no transmission, single speed. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people want to talk zero to 60 times, which we can talk all day long. But with electric vehicles, especially with that instantaneous torque, I like talking about zero to fun. Right. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just unbelievable when you drive these things. You know, it's just amazing. And the base version of the GT has 600 foot-pounds of torque. Right, so right. It's just crazy. Uh, do you think there'll ever be <clears throat> an advantage to using a transmission in an electric vehicle? Because I, I, because you know, in my mind, I think to most 
sort of gearhead type people. Less revs means more economy. So the idea of the engine is spinning at, you know, literally, what, what 9,000, 10,000 RPM? They spin at very high RPM. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, it seems, oh, w w since you have all that torque, if it's spinning at 1,500 RPM, wouldn't you get better economy? But not necessarily so, isn't that Yeah, true? that's right. I mean, the, you don't really need that mechanical advantage that you get out of a gearbox right. when you've got the kind of torque that we're talking about. It's, right. almost, it's almost like you have unlimited torque. So uh, could you do it? Of course you could. In yeah. fact, you know, there was a, uh, a car at SEMA that we did. It was a Mustang that actually had a manual transmission in it, but was converted over to an electric right. motor. And we were using that as mechanical advantage. But you don't need it. Yeah. There's no need to have it. You've and got it's just extra weight. Exactly. Right. Okay. And why would you want that? And of course, I, I think the lack of maintenance is really another selling point, which is, I mean, people don't realize in the old days, like, you know, I like these Duesenbergs, and that was a revolutionary car because you only change the oil every 700 miles. You could go 700 miles without changing the oil, which back in the 30s was a big deal. Yeah, for sure it was. I mean, people used to change the oil every 300 miles, right. 200 miles, you right. know, because <laughs> there was no oil filters yeah. or anything in the cars in those days. And when we talk about maintenance free, Jay, we're also talking about working on predictive maintenance, right? You're right. Because you have all your modules that are, that are connected. And almost every module here is updatable on this vehicle. Right. And you have the ability to tap into those modules and get data off of them. And you can actually start to analyze that data and then be predictive and preventative. Yeah, so you can do it on the fly. So Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, the thing I find fascinating about electric vehicles, your brakes literally last forever because you only use them to hold the vehicle, maybe at a stoplight or something or on a hill. You're using regen almost all the way. Aren't? You are using regen. In fact, yeah. with our one pedal drive, you can come all the way down to a stop. You don't even need to hit the, the right, brake right. pedal. So, oh, pretty yeah, cool. there's a, a lot of interesting things that the electrification allows us to do. It's, it totally changes the automobile and how you interact with it, how you drive it, and your full experience with it. Uh, so let's see, what's different? Well, there's a couple things different. So you'll notice that it's sitting on 20 inch wheels. Right. The wheels are about one inch wider than, than a standard Mach-E. Mm -hmm. So then the tires are obviously wider as well. So you go from a 225 to a 245. And then on the uh, performance edition that we're looking at right now, you've got Prelli P0 tires. Right. So these are summer tires, extremely sticky. That allows us to really uh, leverage all of the available torque that we have in this thing and get it down to the ground. And that's a 20 inch, right? That's a 20 inch. That seems like a nut. Because to me, on most electric vehicles, 19 gives you the best ride, 21 gives you the performance. But with 21s, you blow out sidewalls all day yeah, long. Yeah, because that profile gets really small. Yeah, the profile is so small, you hit a puddle. I've had this happen three times. Bang! And of course, you open your little can of Ready Whip they have in the back there. It doesn't do anything, you know. It just, <laughs> it just, because most of them split the sidewall. Yeah. So 20 is a nice is a nice compromise. Is yeah. that becoming a more popular tire size for now, sure 20s? Is. Because 20s were hard to get for a while. You get 21s or 19s. 20s were a big deal. Now yeah. they're almost becoming standard. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And that's a good looking wheel. It has sort of... Yeah, it's got the machine face with the, with the painted pockets in it. Right. Very aggressive looking wheel. Um, you also notice as you're looking through that wheel, Jay, big rotors. Right, right. 385 millimeter rotors up front, four piston Brembos. Uh, so you got plenty of stopping power when you do need it because you know this thing is very quick So the performance edition you're talking zero to 60 times of 3.5 seconds And this of course is your charging station here. Yep. That's where you charge it up. Okay. I'll open that from the inside obviously I, the, I like how they keep some of the quote gas cues just so it becomes familiar to people Yeah, it's hard to sell something before it's time. You know, I've got a Chrysler airflow in there from 1934 in the the Chrysler before it was sort of the big grill like this in the front, you know, <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. massive headlights. Yeah. And then they come out with this thing that looked like a Art Deco train, and people just went, oh, man, it, it was too much too quickly. So sure. you've got to make those gradual things. It's got to look like what people think is a car, even the sense that you still have the vestiges of a grill. Right. But you don't need a grill, but people, are, you, they, they want to see a grill. Right. You know, there are so many manufacturers, Franklin and others, that had really cool looking cars, but Cadillacs, Lincoln, they all had a grill, so people felt, oh, I, I, want, I want a grill on the front of my car. Yeah, so all those cues that, that you're calling out, that's all so that you can work on that adoption and people's you know, get, becoming familiar and comfortable. But I will say, people should not confuse the fact that people are into electric vehicles and they're realizing what they can do and how exciting they are, uh, yeah. and they're not afraid of advancing. You no, know? I think, you know, Mark Twain used to say, 
I like progress. It's change I don't like. You know, <laughs> right. you know, and that's, and that's how true is that as humans? Yeah, right? that's where it is. A lot of people they yeah. want oh they want the same thing, but they want something different. Right. So this is what you have here: something completely different, but there's enough familiarity to it where you go oh okay well it's a Mustang. You right. know, so, yeah. So, exactly. Uh, Oh, and can we settle something here? Okay, okay. Every week I get letters from people who invented a car where the, the roof is a solar panel so you can drive it 24 hours a day <laughs> because you're just using, there is not enough, solar panels have not reached the stage here but just putting it on the roof is enough to charge the car while it's driving. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank so, you. <laughs> stop sending me your patented idea for this thing that you've invented, you know, because I, I get this all the time. It's not like, can you help me? I've invented a car. I put a solar panel on the roof. That will barely run the air conditioner. Right. So it's not to say that there's no benefit from having it, right. but you're definitely not going to be charging your battery. No, no, you're not, not going to be charging your battery. All right, <laughs> no. good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the other thing, Jay, that you'll notice, all the GTs are lowered 10 millimeters. Okay, I didn't so, notice that. So but, yeah. th that gives you, obviously, better center of gravity, right. better handling, and even a sportier look. Um, and on, on the Performance Edition, it comes with MagnaRide. Mm -hmm. Suspension, right? And you know, we, we started introducing that on the Mustang, the Shelby's a while back, and we've been just bringing it out. And the Magna Ride makes such a big difference. You know, and it's amazing because everything, all the weight is below the axle, correct? Right. I mean, because people don't realize, you know, when uh, Chevy had the Corvette, uh, the cam in block engine had a better center of gravity than the overhead cam engine, right? Because the cams are up here and they're spinning, which is almost gyroscopic yep. it's affecting it but when the cam was down low in the block the center of gravity was lower this everything is below this axle line so all the weight is is down there yep. so they actually handle quite well because this is not a light car is it what's this about it's not a light car it's about 4900 pounds okay yeah well, almost 5000 it's yeah. a five passenger vehicle jay right so right. You, you know you've really opened up the the world of mustang now to those who need something different than what we you know in the, the traditional mustang offers but as you say the center of gravity is low so it's not equal to a mustang but it's not far away right right so it's that's why when you drive it it feels and drives like a mustang right because you've got that low center of gravity and we've tuned it so that it does drive and feel like a mustang to give you that that soul and that that feeling that a Mustang has. Now this has the extended uh, range package on it, right? It does. So the battery on this, uh, the usable energy is 91 kilowatts, mm -hmm. and um, uh, that is our extended range battery that you would see on the other Mach-E's as well. Okay. And, and what does that get you? How many miles? So in the GT Performance Edition, it's 260 EPA okay. miles. Yeah. And in the base version of the GT, it's 270. And this has a frunk as well. Yeah. We should. You want to open it up? Yeah. Let's open that up. Okay. Well, that's, gonna, see, to me, that's... You gotta do a double pull when you go in there, Jay. Okay, right, press that. Yeah, we yep. go. And just double pull the, uh, the hood release there. Oh, here we are. There you go. All right, look at this frunk, Jay. How big is that? So, this is 4.7 cubic feet. Okay. Uh, it's quite a large space. And well, thanks for saying cubic feet instead of liters. Mustang people say cubic inches, <laughs> not liters, you know. <laughs> they so, do. Yeah, that's sort of they an do. American. Just a, and we're probably the only place in the world that does that, isn't that's, it? But, that's right. But yeah, but so liters, I go, okay, and that means that's, that's a, so it's cubic feet. Okay. It's cubic feet. Yeah. And you can see, so it's quite large. It's also been designed so that you can, you know, if you see there's a drain in there. Right. So if you were, you know, front gating, I guess that's what we'll call it now. Front gating? Well, versus tailgating, it's yeah, front gating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can, you know, put your ice and, and beverages and, you know, it'll drain out. And so it's just been really well thought, uh, you know, to use this space um, as best as possible. And then, you know, Jay, if the, the lightning is coming out, right. the F-150 lightning, and its frunk we took to uh, another level. So it's a mega power frunk, mm -hmm. so it has power in it, and it's over 11 cubic feet. I mean, it's massive. You can okay. put two golf bags in there and a whole bunch of stuff you can store. And it really, actually, that changes the whole experience with the vehicle. You know, now you've got sealed storage on a truck that you never had before. And when the cops find out you're driving essentially a beer cooler filled with ice wow, and beer. Well, well, <laughs> well. <laughs> and this is, okay, you wash the fluid yeah. and then brake master. And yeah, the rest of your, okay. you know, the things you'd have to access are underneath there. You know, something I do on my cars, and you tell me if this is necessary. I know if electric paint is different. I usually change brake fluid every year, every 18 months. Is that necessary? It's no longer necessary, Jay. Really? Yeah. So it's almost life of the car. Pretty right? much life of the car. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because there really is almost no maintenance at all. There's no reason to bring this back to the dealer unless there's some 
problem. No, the cost of ownership, you know, is really, it's much lower because you don't have all those things that you do on, a, on, a, on an ICE vehicle, you know, an internal combustion engine that you have to maintain and you have to manage, so. Yeah, that seems to be the biggest selling point with automobiles now. Like when I, uh, when I was doing the Tonight Show, we had a producer and she got a new car, at least a new car every two years, every three years, never changed the oil, never did anything. She just drove it. <laughs> And when the oil got dirty, she, <laughs> she turned it in for something else. Yeah, because people, Someone else's problem? people hate, well, be, between, you know, so many of these kind of quick oil change places that do a terrible yeah. job and all sure. that kind of, they, they don't go to the dealer because they're afraid it's going to be too, so they make problems for themselves. Yeah. Electric, right? Yeah, you don't have any of that. Okay. It's really amazing. It really changes the whole experience. Yeah, and the whole key to me, to me is whenever, I, we've had a lot of electric vehicles here that you can tell are adapted from the internal combustion engine, they've just taken the chassis and converted it. Sure. And they don't have the front here because right. they've, they've got either the motor here and it's sitting way too high. Right. You know, like you would with an internal combustion right. engine. Uh, to me, that's the sign. Yeah, that's what makes it handle the fact that everything is down low. Yeah, and when you architect a you know, vehicle from the ground up, then you can architect this in there and yeah. create the space yeah. for it. Yeah, absolutely. Is it easier to build an electric vehicle than a gas vehicle? I imagine it is. The, the, the number of moving parts is pretty... Yeah, I mean, you've got to define easier. It brings on, uh, it's, it's different, is the way to say it. I right. mean, it just brings on a whole new set of things you have to consider and you have to manage as you're putting the vehicle together. So, I don't know if I'd say it's easier, but it is definitely different, for sure. Right, right. Yeah. But I imagine the simplicity of manufacturing, you don't have a lot of, quote, greasy parts. Well, that's true. You know, you're not doing all of that things in oil and oil. from that perspective 100 yeah. percent yeah yes. yeah the motor is there's no fluids to change i mean it, it's a liquid cooled system but it's not even water is it it's, it's a glycol not. it is right. okay yeah okay. it's like an antifreeze kind of yeah and that's sort of a life of the vehicle thing too isn't it yeah 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 they're very maintenance free that's that's pretty amazing <laughs> well cool let's let's go around to uh the back of the vehicle before we see the inside all right so, you know, the, the, the splitter and the, and the spoiler, everything is, um, you know, new for the GT right. edition. You got the Mustang tail lights, which is sort of... Yeah, right. the tri-bar tail lamps. Right, right. Everybody loves those. Everybody loves those. And then, you know, the, the, the trunk itself, Jay, it's massive. Let's take a look. Yeah. Where do I open it? Right here. Okay. And then, obviously, the seats will drop down, and then, you know, you can load quite a bit in this thing. And so, it's part of that opening up the Mustang options you know, to the Mustang customers. I mean, people who need five passenger or so nobody has a jack anymore, do they? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I mean, there's that, always. I mean, there always is a, a little bit of one, but I wonder if there's money to be made in the aftermarket selling a spare wheel, because the number of people I know, tires are so unique to vehicles now that they, they don't have your tire in stock when you get a when you get a you know you're stuck somewhere for like three yeah. days, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. The idea of changing a tire by the side of the road, that's pretty much... Not too many people do that anymore. No, I know, I think, <laughs> I'm, the only, think, think I'm the only one. And now the seats fold down? They do. Which so will... if I'm restoring my 65 to 89 Mustang, I can actually put the engine transmission back here. Pretty much. To get to my garage yeah. to fix my other Mustang. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, very cool, okay. <laughs> yeah, well that's the key, once those seats go down, I mean, oh my God, you get skis in there, couldn't you? Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Right. Very good. Well, something else I think is cool, uh, these, uh, and something I never thought I'd see on a production car that's as popular as the Mustang, is the lack of door handles. There's no da door handles on the back. I'm glad that you pointed that out. So that was... I, and this is a mass-produced vehicle. I right. Mean, was the fact that there's no door handles. That seems like one of those kind of high-end European things, you know, like trying to sell Americans on no door handles, but you, obviously there is, you just press this button and then it opens. That's right, and that was so key for us to do that, Jay, and it was a struggle at first to figure out, A, how to pull it off in the right way, but you know, the traditional door handle was gonna make this feel traditional. Right, And right. not something fresh and new, and so we spent a lot of time to work on that, and it's been hugely received, I mean, people love it. Is that a hard sell to the guys upstairs when you're dealing with accountants and quote, you know, bean counters, not kind of, we're gonna have no door handle, now just, we have, do we have, 50 million door handles on, on, in the stock, use those, you know. It's all part of making the cake. Yeah, uh, yeah we have a lot of those kind of... Because I remember when, when the Mustang came out, the first generation Mustang, 
This looks like a Falcon in here. It had all the <laughs> kind of Bakelite switches off the Falcon, and the, you know, yeah. the door handles were Falcon. And it, then as it ramped up production, oh, then that gradually got phased out. But you can tell the early, uh, you know, 64 and a half, so they got the generator, and it, it, just a lot of Falcon pieces on it, you know. So this is, okay. It really was important to signal that modernity and that, you know, freshness of it. And, I'll tell you a, a funny story. I, I picked up my daughter and her friend, they're 11 years old, and uh, from the bus, and they didn't know how to get in at oh, first. Yeah. And I was waiting to see if they could figure it out, which they did. Yeah. Uh, and once they did, they just kept getting in and out of the car because they thought it was one of the coolest things they've ever seen. You know? But it's, just, it, it's an example of the thing that people are talking about and the signal that, that it has about this is for something new and something fresh. Is this Braille? Uh, no, <laughs> so that's just to obviously just to, to show you that that's where the lock is at in case you were guessing. Oh, I see. Because once the light goes out, right, you might not know. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's okay. just a lock indicator. Oh, I, oh, I see. And right. now I see a little lock. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I got it. Yeah, Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, this is for right. those who might and not know. And does this work with gloves? It does. Oh, okay. Yeah, it so does. It's, it's not the heat of your hand. It's just pressure. That's correct. Okay, very good. Okay. And this is something a little unusual, this sort of... You'd think this was the door handle, but again, it's not. It's the you same. You got to push pressure. the button, yeah. and then it gives you something to rest your hands on, and yeah. then pull a little bit when you need to. And this goes back to, God, the old Ford Taurus days. The key of the century. Yeah. Our customers love that feature. I know. I always thought, uh, why is it because of cold weather? Uh, no. The, well, the keys don't free. You know, in the old days, they teach you how to heat the key with a lighter. To, you know, to get it to work. A lot know. of people like to use it if they're going to go for a, a jog and they don't want to keep their cars, their keys with them, or, right. or if they're going to go to the beach and they don't want to take their keys right, with them. Right, right. They can lock it right from here and, and do that. Now, obviously, we have new technology. You know, your phone serves as a key, and there's a lot of right. things that are changing. But that particular feature, our customers still, they really do, and they love it. Very good. Okay, so once again, you just press here and then open it there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here we are in the vehicle, uh, and this is fixed. It doesn't rise up. Right. It would be yeah, let's see. Okay, so yeah, so you've got a, a 15.5 inch center screen here, Jay. Big right. one, right? Give you all of your infotainment. We've got a new right. Sync 4A, and you know, it's it's. This is just we can talk about this, and it's really amazing. And then you've got um, a 10.2 inch cluster in front of you, and the reason that you have that, and some cars only have the center screen. Right. But this is a Mustang, and there's driver information that we feel that you're going to want, you're going to need. Right. And so it's right there. All the pertinent information is in front of you. You don't have to go digging for it and looking for it. And so that's why we have the dual screen system. Okay. And is, this is mounted right on the glass? It is. It's brand new technology that did not exist. Um, this is, you know, an invention. They get a lot of inventions on this car. But yes, this is mounted right to the glass. It allows you to do some of the, like the volume and, you know, basic functions. And then we have plans in the future for how that might actually be right, updated. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And then you have another turn to put it in drive or park or whatever. Right. Yep. That's your gear shift knob there. I like the old cruise-o-matic. Uh, yeah. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. You like, yeah. This is because I always have to look down. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and the nice thing is you've got your you know you've got your Prindle right, right up there and again in that screen that's showing you what's going on. You got wireless charging down here, Jay, and you've got all the modern conveniences. Everything that you'd want and expect is here. Yeah. So you just put your phone here and you charge it. That's okay. right. Yeah. Oh, very nice. It's got a B&O sound system. And B&O is? Bangs and Olsen. Bang. Oh, okay, sure, sure. Yeah, okay. so that's the sound system, and there's a, this is kind of the sound bar that's behind here. Right, okay, so speakers are under there. Yeah. So I remember the old days you bought a new car, and the first thing you did was down to Ed and Al's Auto Sound, and they put in some <laughs> fancy it. some fancy stereo, and yeah. they ripped the whole dash out. Now your wipers don't work or anything, but at least you had a good... So, but now everything comes right oh, from man. the manufacturer. You, you can't add aftermarket to anything anymore. No, yeah. and but the quality from that's coming now, right? right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, really it's, good it's pretty stuff. impressive. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> now, what do I have overhead here? So a sunglass holder. Oh, okay, that's what we have here? Yeah, yeah. that's a sunglass holder, and then you've got some map lights, some reading lights here, you know, and, yeah, you've got all the features. I mean, that was, I think Cougar was the first one to have that. Uh, you know, the Mustang didn't have it, but the Cougar under Mercury you had this aircraft, you know, it was some yeah. sort of aircraft, you know, like a pilot, you know, yeah. this overhead. But I always thought that was cool. My Lamborghini Mura had the switches up here, too. Yeah, well, in okay. our Ford performance products, like the Raptor, we have the yeah. hero switches, we call them. Right, yeah. right. Okay, yeah. very cool. And then oh, a garage door opener. And yeah, all so that your thing. integrated garage door opener, which is very nice, which you have to clip, you know, something on there. Well, it's certainly a nice looking interior, and you've got your all kinds of space under here. Yep, but you've got that, and then you've got like a timbre door here that yeah. opens up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, creating even more space and power points in there. So, 
And you got a cup holder for your big 44 ounce giant big gulp of soda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, it, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I don't think anybody expected electrification to be going this fast. No, and we are definitely accelerating it, right? I mean, it's really we're, amazing. By 2030, everything will be electric. Yeah, and right now we're saying that 40% of our fleet is going to be electric by 2030. Yeah, but see, I think it will help to save the gas car because you'll use your traditional Mustang GT the way you use a snowmobile or a recreational vehicle. You go out on the weekend. I mean, if you're sitting in traffic bumping a bump every day, electric car is great because it's cost it's maybe 20 bucks a week to run. Right. And, you know, driving a 429 Mustang every day is going to cost you 200 bucks a week in gas. <laughs> and you're going to load up the plugs and it's just, you know, so I, I, in the same way that uh, horse, there are more horses now than there were during the Civil War because people use them for recreation. They're not beasts of burden anymore, you know? Sure, and sure. It's the same thing with the, the fun cars and the sports cars. They'll be saved and treasured. And I don't think, I, I, I really don't think the electric revolution is going to hurt the car hobby. There's still plenty of brass era cars around or Model Ts because there's always going to be people who want those. You For know? sure. But the, you can't deny, you know, that the technology yeah. is amazing. And, you know, all the technology, not only with the electrification itself, but even what we're bringing into the cars now. Like this vehicle, for instance, has um, available uh, hands free driving. Right. What we call it Blue Cruise. Right. right so right. when we're out on the highway later, if you and I, you know, we go for a ride here, we'll we'll show it. It's just it's it it's an experience like we've never had before. It's, right. It's right. And, but you still have to have, be in the car. You know. Again, I remember when power steering came out. People, I don't want anything, but I want to feel the road. <laughs> power. You know, when ABS came out, same thing. I don't want a computer telling me what. But they, they're just aids. I, I, like they always call it uh, driverless. It's not drive. You still have to be. You can't be in the back seat with a bottle of scotch and going. No, you're going to gonna be paying to, attention. Yeah, you got. You've got to pay attention. You've got to actually drive the car. But to me, the greatest thing is the, the mirror warning systems mm, now. Yes. Where, I mean, you've just got so many ways not to have an accident. Well, very cool. Can we take this for a ride? I think we should. Yeah, let's give it a shot. This ready. To, I guess I'm ready to go. We're right? ready to go. Yeah. You know, internal combustion engines are like flathead engines now versus overhead valve engines with electric engines. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, it's yeah. the idea that for years, electric cars are always just golf carts. You know right. what I mean? Exactly. So the fact that this is more powerful than, uh, it's amazing to me. I know, that's what I think. You know, most people have this misconception. They haven't been in an electric vehicle. Right. So they don't even know. They, they, they think they don't like it or they think it's not for them. They don't even know. Right. I mean, I always tell people, especially like, you know, with the Mustang Mach-E, I said, what, well, you don't want instantaneous torque? You don't want, you know, yeah. you, you don't want 634 foot-pounds just ripping? Well, to me, I always find the absence of noise as intriguing as the noise. I just hate things in the middle. I hate when they pipe in a fake internal combustion engine sound for an electric car, because now you just, it's like a phony thing. Right, you know? exactly. I mean, it does what it does. It's like I always say to people, do you want to win the race or not? You exactly. Know? Exactly. I, I always use the example with truckers. You know, trucks used to have the big grill and the big cab, and then they had that truck that had the kind of, you know, that it looked aerodynamic oh, yeah, looking. Yeah, yeah. And all the truckers thought that was the <laughs> ugliest, stupidest thing. And then it got like 20% better mileage, and then suddenly, oh, everybody had to have one. Right, that's the greatest thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's like you said before. I like progress, but I hate change. Right, right, right. <laughs> But see, you just put your foot in this thing. Oh my God! And look, Does that feel great? I mean, yeah. I mean, it really does go. <laughs> and it's funny because the number of times you can quietly sneak past a policeman, you know, because they, because you know, cops are here. All right, he hears you coming. He hears you from a mile away. Yeah, you got to be a mile away. You know, so you can sneak up on him now. And it's amazing how horsepower has just become. Just, I mean, cars with six, seven, eight, nine hundred horsepower. I know. You know, I mean, numbers that would have been inconceivable just a few years ago. Uh, you know, during gas crisis and all that stuff. And we're getting better with the tire technology and the suspension t to put yeah. that kind of power down. Yeah, yeah. Right? Back in the day, even if you could get that horsepower, what would you have done with it? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, even like I said, the tire technology is amazing. 
that's what enabled us. You know, the, the standard GT has 600 foot-pounds of torque, which is still a lot, right? Right, right. But the reason this one has 634 is because of those summer Pirellis that are on here. Right, right. We can actually get it to the ground, so we're able to, to really maximize it. Because people in California don't even understand the concept of changing the tires in the winter. No. Nobody here does it. Right. You know, they, they drive up to the snow and they go off the road and they have no idea what the heck happened. You know? That's the thing in Michigan, you know, we have yeah. Yeah, obviously another set of tires for our car. Right. We drive them, we drive Mustangs in the snow, it doesn't matter. And then what we also, Jay, another thing that we introduced on the GT uh, Performance Edition, uh, on all GTs I should say, is this um, unbridled extend mode. It's a, right. new, it's a new mode. So we had the whisper and the engage and the unbridled, and now we have unbridled extend. And that's really been designed to give you more sustained lap time, for instance. Right? Okay. Um, we've changed things. The pedal mapping is more linear, both for the brake and the and the and the accelerator. But it's and and then we have uh, the battery is is we're cooling the battery, but we're doing it um, in advance. Like we're anticipating once you go right. on the extend, you know we're cooling it so that it, we're anticipating what you're going to be doing. And what it. is the Optimum temperature for batteries about 73, 73 yeah, it's degrees. Right, right in the 70 degree yeah, range. 70 yes, degree range, that yeah. is the optimal temperature. I mean, I think that's why electric cars are so popular in California. This is the ideal <coughs> location and the ideal uh, temperature and everything for, for sure. Them. Yeah. Now you can see that you get that little bit of that accelerator sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's not trying to be a V8 or anything like that. Right, it's, right. And it's actually, the, the, the base for that sound is actually from the motors themselves. Yeah. And then it's amplified. But you can feel even, and I know you're, but the handling, I mean, you know, we were talking about the center of gravity before. You're just, this thing is like hooked to the ground. Yeah, I mean, it's so low. I mean, that's what's pretty amazing. I know, because look at the headroom you have, right? Yeah, you got all kinds of headroom. I mean, the technology is so fast, manufacturers almost can't keep up. I remember back in the 2005 era, uh, they came out with the Mercedes McLaren, the SLR, mm -hmm. and it had their own V8 engine, supercharged, but at the time, the dual clutch transmission had not been developed, and the car probably had a four-year gestation period. Right. So by the time it came out, there was no Bluetooth, you had to buy the separate phone that came with the car. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you also had, you know, a torque uh, converter transmission. Yep. So they were just, same thing happened to the LFA, the Toyota. You know, by the time it came out, the technology moved on already. Right. Sure. Yeah. And then, then it becomes irrelevant. Yeah, technology is moving at, at a pace that we've never seen before. But that's why, I'm, you know, I've been in the business for 28 years now, and this is the most exciting time for me. Yeah, yeah, no, it is exciting because it's like changing from steam ran America from 1800 to 1911. Then internal combustion got rid of steam and electric at that time. Yeah. And then for just about 100 years, maybe a little bit more, you had internal combustion. And now everything's going electric. Yeah, I tell you, one of the things that I'll never forget, I had time with Carol Shelby before he passed. And I said to Carol, I said, Carol, with all the great things that you've done in your career and your life, I said, what is the thing that you know stands out the most? And he said, what we're doing right now, Dave. He said, I'm just a guy that makes cars go fast. He said, but what you and your team are doing with the technology, and you're, he yeah. said, you're, you're making cars do stuff I never knew they could do. And he, he's a character, wasn't he a character? Oh man, he was. He was the ultimate, Jay, you gotta buy this. He, he, remember that Aurora engine deal? Yeah. Jay, yeah. this is the best car I've ever built. I go, Carol, <laughs> no, Jay, it's the best car, Carol. You know, <laughs> yeah. you're just trying to sell cars. Oh yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah, he was a salesman of sorts, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good character. <laughs> He's a good guy, though. I had a lot of fun with him. It was an honor to be able to. But it is how, how much of selling vehicles like this is image, you know? People forget when the Mustang first came out, it had the smallest V8, right. 260 and 289. Right. Chevy had 327, so it was seen as a secretary's car. Right. You know, they were. I mean, uh, Leon Cook was so afraid people would see it as or what the English would call a hairdresser's car, you know? <laughs> and then, so he gave it to Carl Shelby, he said, make this thing fast, make it a race car. Right. And that's what he did. Miata had the same problem when it first came out, that was seen as, quote, a hairdresser's car, whatever that means, mm -hmm. you know? And so they, they, went, they quickly ran uh, SCCA racing with it, you know? To prove it. And yeah. yeah. And to, to, so Give it some cred. Prove it's metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I think, when they first came out with this as a Mustang. Oh, that's, it's not a Mustang, you know. It's like uh, 
the old Corvette guys who went nuts if the taillights weren't round. You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a Corvette, they have to be round. They don't, they don't have to be round. You know. Well, I'll tell you, that decision to make it a Mustang, and, and we took a lot of heat, uh, as, as you know, right? A lot of the enthusiasts were not, were not happy at first. Yeah. But that's all dying down now. And, and I think that this is earning its credibility and it's earning its place in the stable of Mustangs. Yeah, and I think Mustang becomes a car brand. You know, I mean, I, 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 I think it's so popular. You could literally open a Mustang dealership. You could. And just sell Mustang, you know. You absolutely could. If you wanted to. So it's, it's like, to me, I think the worst decision Ford ever made, I think it's maybe where they changed presidents. We're not building cars anymore. You remember that thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, you are. They're just called SUVs. They're still, <laughs> they're still cars. Right. And people, oh, you know, Ford's not making cars anymore. No, we, no, yes. I had more arguments with people over that, you know? Yeah. It's, it's the modern day, like, people want the SUV and the CUV, right? You know, this really does handle nicely. Doesn't it feel good? It, it really does. It really does. In fact, I think if you took somebody who was not a car person, put them in this, and didn't tell them it was electric, I don't think they would know because it, it feels like a gas car. I mean, other than starting it with the one button, you know. Right, but. right. And it, and it really hugs the road. And you can tell that, you know, again, we've got the magnetized suspension. We've got, but this is tuned. Like when you're driving this, Jay, I feel, and maybe I'm biased in this, but. I think you're biased. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you're driving a, a Mustang. Like, I mean, you feel like it's. Right. right? Yeah. This isn't just some. SUV that we've electrified. I mean, this has got that right. heart and soul of right. the spirit, the fun to drive, right? You know, the first time we, we went to the simulator, so we have the simulator that we use for our, all of our race teams, right. and it's been, it's very advanced. And so we went down to uh, drive this vehicle on the simulator, and the team had thought they had had something that was, you know, pretty much pretty close to what they wanted. And I got in the simulator and I drove it, and I came out and I said, it's not a Mustang. Yeah. And they said, well, why? And so we talked about it. We talked about what, and they went back to the drawing board. And, you know, about a month later, I went back down the simulator and I redrove. And this, what you're driving right now is pretty much what we, what yeah. we ended on. And I said, now it's a Mustang, right? Um, so, we're, you know, you, even the technology that we used as we developed the cars uh, is amazing. Well, I think that's, you know, this is something I've talked about a lot on this website, is the fact that American cars are now being built all by engineers. There's no guys from Whirlpool that were in sales or <laughs> That's right. Zenith TVs or Maytag. It was where they used to get guys. You used yeah. to get products. Guys who said, what's the product? I will sell it. Without having any sense of, I always remember that famous quote from some GM guy that disc brakes, what's in an airplane? It, it stops fine. You know, why would you need disc brakes on an automobile? You know, instead of just looking how to make it better, faster, whatever. Right. You know, and that that's what's fun. I mean, all I, I put American engineering and technology against the best of Europe or Japan nowadays because to me, it's all engineers. It's you guys. It's Mary Barra. Uh, it, it's it's Royce. It's sure. it, It's all these guys. They're all car people, and they live and breathe cars. You know. The ones that I think are going to be interesting are the cars that are not car people and decide to build a car, whether it's Sony or Apple or something. You know, they, 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 there are parts of it they don't get. That's know? right. No, I think you're right. They'll, they understand the technology, but they don't understand the rest of what makes a car. Right, a car. right, yeah. right. That's not saying they couldn't do it. I'm sure, sure they could, but sure, sure. I, until you get car people in there, yeah, this does handle very well. Now, I know you've driven a lot of hands-free stuff. Right. But, you know, if you wanted to attempt it on this one, you can. It's, it's not hard to get into. Even on this road, it's not just freeway? So it's certain zones that have been mapped, right? right? And then, so what happens is, is you go into a cruise control mode here. Right. If it's not mapped, then you'll just be in what, normal cruise control. Right. But if it is mapped, then it will go ahead and it will put you into Blue Cruise if you've got it selected here. It'll put you into Blue Cruise and it'll drive for you. Right, right. Um, and you've got the camera monitors in front of you that are monitoring your eyes. It takes a little getting used to, that's for sure. So what do you think of the sound that we have in this when you hit that accelerator? Do you, because I know you don't want the sound piped in, fake sound, but right. do you think that it's appropriate or do you, do you no, not like it? No, I think like it's it? good, especially it is a performance model. Right. And I think that, you know, if it's like watching a silent movie. I mean, without some of that, yeah, you know, you, you, you sort of you don't get the full experience. 
I had a I had a buddy. I've got a Boss 302 Mustang. Right. And um, a buddy has one as well. And I didn't have my exhaust plates in, so my car's really loud. And uh, we were on the track together. We were tracking the cars, and right. he said, "Hey, can I drive yours for a minute?" And I said, "Yeah, you got the same car, but sure." So he took my car out, and he went on the track and did a couple laps, and he came back, and he said, "You know what? I'm right." He said, "Your car's faster." I said, "What are you talking about?" He said, "Well, it's so loud. Right. <laughs> it feels, you know, yeah. it feels it, faster, right?" It's another sensor it overload. Is. Yeah. But you know, this is also the kind of car as you do your daily driving. It's comfortable. Yeah. You know, I mean, the performance is there when you want it. But it's a comfortable vehicle. And that's electric power steering. Yeah, yeah, there's no it more, is. Yeah. There's no fluid power yeah. steering anymore. Well, even that, look how far we've come with the electric power steering. When we went from power yeah. steering to electric power steering, there were people that were up in arms about that. Right, right. right? <laughs> up in arms about everything. <laughs> but the feel has gotten very natural and very, it's a good feel. It really does feel like it's billet. You know? Yeah, and nice solid, right? Extremely solid feeling. Well, and you know that's another thing, Jay. We, when we talk about not having the engine making all the noise, then there's other noises that you never heard before. Right. That that rise to the surface is like draining the swamp. What's right. next? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all you hear in this is the tires. Huh? Exactly. I remember Ford had the ad back in the '60s. The LTD is quieter than the Rolls Royce. You remember those ads they <laughs> yeah. used to do? And they used to show, you know, people dressed up with diamonds and jewels sitting in the back seat, you know. And you realize this is pretty much just does them all in. <laughs> oh, yeah. As quiet as those vehicles may have been, they weren't as quiet as this. No, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And plus, this is faster. Oh, my gosh. It's very fast. Think about it. It wasn't that long ago to, to hit, you know, sub three and a half seconds. Yeah. At zero to sixty was. I mean, that was a that was a supercar. Well, I said this a million times on this website. People always go after me for it. But when I was a kid, the fast car was the uh, Chrysler would come out with the Hemi, and it went zero to sixty in six point three. I remember reading that, seeing that number in car drives. Well, that's got to be a misprint, because in those days, anything under ten seconds was just. Oh my God! Yeah, just, that was wicked fast, just, right? Yes, yeah, wicked fast. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, nobody even says that anymore. <laughs> but wicked fast. Yeah. Yeah. And this thing is wicked fast. There yes, you go. Look at that. That's just fun. I don't care who you are, how many times you do it. The brakes feel good, don't they? The brakes feel good, and the idea that it's so maintenance-free. The idea there's no. 600 mile oil change and that first check and that's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks and there's no spark there's nothing there's really nothing i mean these could go a half a million miles you wouldn't know it right exactly i mean it, it's it's pretty nothing really wears out it's pretty amazing yeah it's a whole new era we're okay. in well dave next i can't imagine what what you're going to be in charge of next but whatever it is it's going to be pretty impressive thank you very much my friend thank from lamal to the electric cars and who knows what's next so very cool see you guys next week mm -hmm.